This is the Dell S2722 QC. If at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same monitor, I'll have a BH link and Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's jump into the review. All right, now right away, this is a 27 inch flat monitor with a resolution of 3840 by 2160, AKA 4K. This has a fantastic PPI or pixels per inch, which basically means how clear or crisp your image is gonna be, how densely packed those pixels are. And this is about 163, this is very good. This means text on screen, even if it is very small text is going to be very crisp. You're not gonna see any pixelization. Now because this is 4K, it is a very pretty monitor to look at. But besides that, the panel type is an IPS panel. This is in-plane switching, which basically means you're gonna get really good viewing angles. So if you move to the left or the right, up and down, it's not gonna change the colors or the brightness on screen. This is great for color accurate work and such things as that. And this is my overall top pick for panel type for everyday usage, whether that be color accurate work, business type, or productivity type workflow. Also real quick, if you are interested in gaming performance, I am gonna talk about gaming performance at the very end of the video, so stay for that. But let's move on to the brightness. Okay, the brightness is pretty good, hitting an advertised brightness of about 350 nits. Now during my testing, this thing peaked out at about 370 nits. Uh, but I would say it's pretty typically at 350 nits, which that's a very accurate read. So good thing Dell, that's pretty cool. But yeah, so 350 nits up to 370 nits uh, is a good brightness. It's a vibrant monitor um, and it does have a nice matte finish on it. So if you have a brighter room, you're still gonna be fine with this monitor. However, if you have a window right behind you, probably not the monitor for you. You are gonna need a brighter monitor. However, during the time that I was using this, I had a window over to the left side. In the morning, the sun comes right in, but it's over directly to the left side or the right side actually. And I have lights on in the room and that's not a problem. So pretty much only if you're gonna have a window behind you, uh, that's when it's gonna be a problem. But normal lights in the room, a normally bright room is not gonna be a problem with this. I know continuing on with brightness, this does not have HDR compatibility. It does have this thing called Smart HDR, which in my experience testing it out really does not much to it. It does not change that peak brightness of about 370 nits. So not really a big deal there. However, I think most of you guys don't even care about HDR if you're interested in this monitor. All right, now colors. Colors are good covering 99% of the sRGB color gamut. Out of the box accuracy isn't amazing, but after calibration, this thing is quite accurate and it can be used for photo or video editing. However, I would like to see wider color coverage. All right, moving on and continuing with productivity, picture in picture and picture by picture. If you're one of those people that uses this a lot to hook up multiple computers or a console on a computer, whatever, uh, this has it and it's very easy to navigate to. In the menu system, you have a bunch of different kind of presets of where the picture in picture or picture by picture is gonna go, so that is nice. All right, now the contrast ratio is typical for an IPS panel. Pretty much no IPS panel goes over 1,000 to one, which it is. So the blacks are not insanely deep. Um, however, I still would probably take an IPS panel over a VA panel. Absolutely, I would take an IPS panel if what you're gonna be doing is productivity, everyday work, stuff like that, coding, you know, all that stuff, I would definitely take an IPS over a VA panel, 100%. All right, now moving on to the menu system and controls. This is my least favorite part of the monitor itself. Now I've used a lot of Dell monitors. The menu system really hasn't changed. It's kind of outdated. It's very pixelated, even though it's a 4K monitor, that's just how the menu system is. It's not the prettiest to look at, although it's functional and it works. Uh, however, the one thing that I do like about the menu system and controls is it has a dedicated on and off button, which works very responsibly. This is true amongst a lot of Dell monitors. Uh, however, the thing that I really don't like is they have kind of an old style, or maybe not an old style, but a four button layout for controls. There's no joystick here. Um, and it is very, very difficult. It's very slow. It's not intuitive at all. It's just overall a bad system. Basically what it is, is four buttons next to the power button on the right chin of the monitor. And these will kind of change their functions and they'll show you on the menu system, whether it goes up or down, left or right, interacting or going back. And they change dependent on where you are in the menu. And overall, it's just, way harder to use because instead of just looking at a joystick and you're just navigating around, you have to look down and see what it's actually controlling now. 
uh, and you cannot just look at it by feel. You have to look down, you kind of have to see where your fingers are. Overall, it's just bad for controlling. This is probably one of my least favorite. I think it's my second least favorite. Scepter's old menu controls were the worst, uh, but this one is the second worst. It's it's not good. That being said, many of you probably only set your settings once and then leave it. So if you are that kind of person, this shouldn't bother you too much. You just have to do it once. However, I typically go into my settings a lot and change them up depending on what I'm doing. Uh, so this probably wouldn't be my favorite to live with every day. All right, now talking about basic compatibility. This is compatible with 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter vase mounts, and you absolutely can put a monitor arm on this thing. I think this would be a really fantastic thing to put a monitor arm Although getting into the next point is the build quality and the stand, which is quite, quite good. So you might not wanna get a monitor arm uh, unless you're really into them because the stand is really good. It's very polished, it's expensive feeling, it looks really nice. The back of the monitor has this really nice like pattern, very upper class and like minimalistic, but I don't know, it's elegant. Uh, that's basically what this monitor is. It's elegant and it looks expensive. But besides that, the functionality is also fantastic with height adjustability, tilt adjustability, swivel, and it even has rotation to go 90 degrees. All of those functions are easy and light and very easy to put all back and just have them 90 degrees. It's all really, really well done. This is one of the best stands uh, that I've used. I think the best that I've used from Dell. Also, this does have cable management built into the stand, which is nice and it does actually hide them. Some don't actually hide them. They're not designed well. Uh, however, one of the things that I also really like about the stand is the base part of it is completely flat. On some other Dell monitors, they kind of go for this design as well, but it's slightly like angled, whereas this one is completely flat. This is really good because you can put your phone there or set pens there, you know, business cards, whatever you want. You can actually set it on the base of the stand. This is good because it doesn't actually delete desk space where the stand is because that part is completely flat. It's just a little bit raised up. So it's actually usable desk space, which is really big with me. All right, moving on to internal speakers. This does have internal speakers and they are actually quite good for monitor speakers. These are dual three watt speakers. They get reasonably loud, probably louder than you would probably want in an office. Um, if you're at a home office, you don't care, but they do definitely get loud. They are very clear. Obviously, there's no bass. We are meaning standards of monitor speakers, which are not good. Uh, so, but these are quite good for monitor speakers. If you're someone that uses headphones or a headset most of the time and only needs some monitor speakers when you're not using them in a pinch or when you're showing someone else something, these would absolutely work for you. All right, ports are good, including two HDMIs, two USB type A's, a three and a half millimeter audio out. And then the big thing is the USB type C with 65 watts of charging. This is also upstream for those two USB type A's. So if you wanna use those USB type A's and have them work, uh, and actually one of them has the fast charging, you're gonna need to plug in that USB-C cable. Uh, however, this is really great. Now with those USBs, there's one on the back of the monitor, like the typical USBs, USB type A's. There's one on the back of the monitor where all the ports are. And then there's one actually on the front of the monitor in that front bottom chin on the left side. That is awesome. And that one is actually the one with the charging capability. So if you wanna plug your phone in there, you can do that. If you wanna plug anything else in there, you can do that. That's great placement if you need to plug things in and out of your computer, but you don't necessarily wanna go maybe over to your tower, or if you have a laptop, you don't wanna plug it in your laptop, you can plug it right in your monitor. That is huge, and I love that. But overall, this is a fantastic productivity monitor. It's got a great screen, it's got a great panel, fantastic resolution, incredibly clear, and the stand is amazing, especially if you're a coder, video or photo editor, or just want a really high resolution, fantastic productivity monitor. I absolutely recommend this thing. Again, I have links below to B&H, which I think it is in stock right now, and I also have Amazon links below, but I don't think it's in stock on Amazon at the moment. But the review's not over. We are gonna get into the gaming performance now. I say it at the end, because I think most of you probably don't care about this, but for the 10% of you that do, here it is. This has a max refresh rate of 60 Hertz. We expect that. Uh, however, it does have free sync, which is pretty freaking awesome. And talking about that, screen tearing really wasn't a big thing. I think I saw it a couple times, right? You're always gonna have a little bit. Uh, however, it is not obtrusive at all or intrusive. Really actually quite impressive. Now, continuing on with the response time and ghosting, the response time hits a max 
of four milliseconds, great to great, which is actually pretty good for a more productivity style monitor like this. However, the ghosting, because this is an IPS panel and just how they tuned the panel is really, really low, like way lower than really high end VA panels. Uh, so that is really good. But talking about the game performance, it was like really enjoyable, especially if you want to game at 4K. So if you have an Xbox Series X, a Series S or a PS5, this is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Have it hooked up to the back of your monitor, have your work or school or whatever, laptop or PC there or whatever you're using and then switch over when you wanna game at night in some high resolution. This is actually really good for that. It was actually quite surprising to me how good the game performance was and really the screen tearing. That's where a lot of these more productivity monitors fall short is screen tearing, but we are seeing more and more that screen tearing is being eliminated from even productivity monitors, although this is a higher end productivity monitor. But yeah, if you want to game on this thing, you absolutely can. If you want to game on a PC, you're going to need a pretty beefy PC to game in 4K. I was gaming on a laptop plugged into this thing and it was struggling uh, to hit those even 60 FPS in 4K. But yeah, if you do have like an Xbox Series X or something like that, if you want to game in 4K, this is definitely gonna be cool for it. But again, you can check it out below. This was Type C Tech Reviews. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Type C Tech Reviews out.